a little bit on the struggle and going into more of a, um, let's say, um, structured map. Not as off the cuff uh, as Dust 2, not as off many opportunities for randomness as on Dust 2. So for Copenhagen Flames now, starting on the CT on the T side as well, it's not going to get any easier. It's not going to get any easier. Yeah, I would imagine Cloud9 will certainly bring momentum into this map, although winning the pistol may change that for Copenhagen Flames. This time they don't, they don't opt for any P250s, just the Glocks. When we often see on a T pistol, one player is just out there scouting. In fact, Nodius is scouting with the bomb, it seems, but maybe he wants to show it on purpose. Maybe there's a greater um, purpose for that. We'll see. They're charging towards the A bomb site, though. OC is at the point of no return. It will get taken out. Oh, and there it is, opening up. Both of these teams have been just solid on the T pistols. They've just been hitting all the shots. Copenhagen Flames picked up the T pistol on Dust 2. Modem, though, time to, for him to step in. There's Sonic with the headshot. Modem still in the fight as well. He's got the Ooh. HP, and this is looking like the big flank coming in from Modem. It's down to refresh in a 1v2. How did this happen? So I think it was Hooksy who had the bomb, and he was near truck and was facing whoever was down the stairs. But he got killed. But obviously, when you die and you're holding the bomb, the bomb bounces forwards and then rolls on yeah. the floor. So the bomb, the bomb, someone else had to try and pick up the bomb at that point and was completely exposed to the position. And things went from bad to worse. So it looks to me like Copenhagen Flames may have overextended there with the, you know, with the big objective. And maybe there was a bomb plant to be had, or at least just keep it a little safer. So I um, think may, things may have gone a little better for them. That one, it's, it's a really rough ending, to be honest. Oh my God, the combo meal deal, the hunger buster, the second Molotov. Is that going to be a thing now these days? That's really interesting. You run through the first one and there's another one to deal with. On a pistol as well, that could be brutal. Uh, oh man, this makes me so nervous, but it's Modem. Dude. He is fired up right now. Five frags in two rounds. He is just hitting shots. No fear at all. Copenhagen Flames right now, as far as he's concerned, they haven't given him a reason to be afraid. He's just out there taking duels all day long. But you're right for pointing it out. The second Molly, yeah. Copenhagen Flames, no smoke to put it out. You're just you're in for a rough time. On rare occasion, um, we've seen T sides deliberately die to Molly to not give a kill bonus to um, SMGs or otherwise. Not on this occasion, though. We've got that early boost coming in from the likes of Copenhagen Flames. No presence mid. Oh, but he gets the shot. Now, Cloud9 know what that means. There's no map presence almost anywhere, but they've lost two players now on the B bomb site. They've got very aggressive positions towards A. You can see MSM on the flank already, but when you've lost two players, then what good does what good is it? Tessa's completely blind, able to take Floppy out. This is a disastrous round from Cloud9, super early. OC only able to get one again. MOTM's coming in from the back, but that's being looked for by the likes of Farley. Yeah. Farley's holding on it. Misses the shot. The man can bend bullets, James Bardoff. He only gets hit if he wants to. And he's going to back out. So, I mean, yes, save the gear. It's worthwhile. Is he thinking that perhaps there's a... No, both terrorists died on the B site, and everybody else died on the B site as well. So there's yeah. no saving anything out here. This running will be heard as well. Perhaps he's just looking to see if he can't catch somebody out over here and just take their gun. Yeah, he may have been heard, though, by Hooksy, who I think is towards that short B position. So... Getting super weird now. Able to take another one out at the very least. Um, so we'll see what they do with this round, Cloud9. That was really unfortunate for them. Again, like, it's one one thing to lose the first player, but I think it was JT who got taken out in short B as well. Because you know where four of the five players are. Indeed. So everyone will try and take as aggressive positions as possible. Indeed. So that one was kind of rough for him. You need um, the B site to hold the defense to hold, because what you're doing is the instant response should be to push up into um, playground and just take over that entire half of the map. Never, don't, don't even let Copenhagen Flames get out. And so Copenhagen Flames know that full well. They know that they need to get through the defense on B, and you're just giving it to them at that point. The Molly missed from Cloud9. The HE may have done a lot more, actually. I like the, the combination from the from the, the anti-eco round to, to that round of the grenades. But unfortunately, that Molly didn't land. I would have liked to have seen what would have happened. For science, you know. This is really interesting. Is this going to work out or not? There's the peak. Follow-up is there. Bottom not going to miss. So they know Bottom's down in connector, and Bottom... Little does he know, if he pushes up here, he gets the bomb. He's going to hear the footsteps. He, I think he was close enough to hear Nodios. Oh, oh my Dude, this God. guy's not missing anything. I think he triple dinked him. 
Yeah, unbelievable. I guess one was through the wall. That is, that was pretty solid. I can't believe he won that duel. No, I think you're, you're thinking nine times out of ten he's a dead man there. Yeah. Right, there yeah, he one is. One time he isn't, but again, Floppy's right behind him, so he gets a free kill afterwards. Cloud9 looking strong once more. And uh, what is there for Farley to do now? He's five for two, so he's got off on, onto the scoreboard early. Cannot be said for Nodius though. Zero for four at present. JT zero for three. Everyone else has got some kills. 30 seconds. Is he actually going to go for this? He's got 50 HP. Yeah, you go. But I mean, what's nice about this is that fairly he had such a quiet dust too. So for him to get a strong start here as your op, right, you know, feels a bit better. Perhaps for Copenhagen Flames is going to give him something to work with. I mean, it's still very early days, T side, overpass. And with 10 seconds left, it is him just going to be trying to save this AWP by the looks of things. They wouldn't be able to afford it in the next round. Oh. Nope. <laughs> something is missing. Magic. Well, Farley will be able to hold on to his AWP, and you can't do something with that. It's an eco round for the rest of his teammates unless they choose to force around it. Just all, all the frags. <laughs> all the frags. That was that was an exceptional round in a very key situation uh, around that bomb for Cloud9. And again, we saw on Dust2, Copenhagen Flames lost a crucial round early which opened the floodgates for Cloud9. Could that be the round on this occasion? Oh, look at the coordination. They're not, they're not giving you any opportunity there. You think, okay, I'll go through that smoke and the molly and I'll take an angle, eat the flashbang, get taken out. AWP lost for a time. It will be collected, but they've got no map control. They've got no element of surprise here whatsoever. Yes, they've been fully forced towards the B side. Three players on B right now for Cloud9 as well. And, I mean, so long as Modem and OC hold their positions, there's no reason for, Co for Cloud9 to rotate off. Yeah. They can just hold here all day long. Cloud9 put a smoke up in party to give a false sense of security with OC creeping. But again, they will be victimized towards B, it looks like. Nodius with AWPs in the red OC coming in from the back. He's been hurt. Just got to be careful now. They've got the angles. Well played. Cloud9 have been really good at taking the game away from Copenhagen Flames in the eco rounds as well as the, the full buy rounds. We saw that in Dust 2, we're starting to see it here. They're making it really hard for Copenhagen Flames to go towards the A bomb site. Well, this is some vintage CSGO, right? As we get a timeout called by Copenhagen Flames, tactical this time. Um, but uh, this is some vintage CSGO in the sense that uh, you want to you want to punish when they're on an eco. Yeah. You want to beat them up. You don't want to let them breathe. You want to just get in there and keep the pressure on. If you let them just take their time and set up and maybe get some lucky digs in there, all of a sudden you're dealing with a round that you may lose. Whereas if you're just showing confidence, you got Modem and, and OC right now who are just fragging out of their minds on Cloud9. Just put those guys in there and just let them go to work. Don't hold them back. Yeah, and it might be because of the, the youth of Copenhagen Flames. They don't have the experience to necessarily deal with this kind of harassment as a, as a, as a more storied, more tenured squad would. What are you supposed to do, though? You're just supposed to like hit shots, right? That's how you punish them. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you're going you're gonna to charge me? Cool, I'm just going to hit your head shots every time with the Deagle. Except that they're not. And Modem is just beasting them. Yeah, they're being suffocated. They're being suffocated at present. So OC has the... He's got that fast one on lock. I need to learn that one. And he's got the flashbang support as well. So it looks like he might be playing the fountain position here. We'll play the pass tonight. Mart off. Let's do it. But it's, you can My favorite maps. Buy around though. Copenhagen Flames again. This time it's JT who steps up. Takes down Hooksy in the connector. Modem back and off as well. You just fall back. Now you've done your job. You've put some pressure on. OC still hanging around. He's hit this, and he does. Tough break for refresh. It looked like he had that dialed. Yeah, and you've got to be really careful if you're Copenhagen Flames trying to punish CT Cloud9 from running away, because as we've seen, they've had multiple bait setups where someone's been watching that angle as another person's been running to bait a peak. So nothing is necessarily a given for Cloud for Copenhagen Flames. Look at that pop flash play from Cloud9. They really have studied here. Oh my god, they're everywhere. Oh, this is so disheartening if you're Copenhagen Flames. They're in your emails. Yeah, they they're just they're downloading you. No, it's oh man, he's got nowhere to go. Floppy long range headshots. Five to one, Cloud9 on the CT side. Just looking so strong right now. Copenhagen Flames. Not they. Pff. It feels like since the beginning of the first half of Dust2, we haven't really seen them. They hit the ground running. They put the pressure on Cloud9. And Cloud9 showed that they're capable of withstanding that pressure. And now they're just excelling. Now they're yeah. just beating up on them. Copenhagen Flames have been compromised, man. Cloud9 got the password to that ITQ. <laughs>
Kevlar and some pistols for Copenhagen Flames. It's a mixed bag. It's a pots and pans buy. Hooksy with two flashes. So he can deploy a flash over Monster and then maybe one that goes behind the pillar. That looks like that's generally what you would throw from where he is at the moment. You go towards the barrel to get the pot flash into Monster itself. Here he goes, found a way. And then off to the second one goes exactly there. So they can face without it going off, but behind the pillar, it'll flash everybody else. That said, Cloud9 are winning these oh. duels. Hooksy, that's a cheeky one. That was a Glock. Instant Glock headshot through the smoke. Get out of here. Hooksy taking some damage and they are just charging through one after the other. This turns into a very expensive anti-eco for Cloud9 in the end. They saved the op, fair enough, and an AK, but that cost them way more yeah. than it should have. Which will only mean something if Copenhagen Flames win this round. Otherwise, they'll make most of that money back, or at least half of it, actually. So they need to have impact now. They've, they've laid out the groundwork for recovery here, Copenhagen Flames. But as you can see, the bomb hasn't been planted in any of the rounds they've lost. Bearing in mind they've only won one round. There's a lot of, for Copenhagen Flames to do. Got grenades towards that short B position as well. Cloud9 looking to take liberties once again. Do you actually peek this here? Tess is holding an off angle, but do you go beyond that? Wouldn't recommend it. OC feeling comfortable and confident. Now, Copenhagen Flames are miles away from party with all that aggression they've seen from Cloud9. It just allows OC to be in connector for longer. He's got no cover above him whatsoever. It's a really dangerous rotation for a sniper to make it back towards toilets in a position like this in connector. But with all the conditioning they've done, OC feels fine just staying here. They don't have anybody in short B either, so there's no way for him to to escape here. There's no guaranteed way to fall back. He's just going to stand there. There's a flash, and again, <laughs> didn't even flash him. He just wins the duel straight up. And now OC is going to pick up one. Saw the second. Oh, oh my yes, god. Two. Went back for more. And it's floppy taken down refresh, but that was just, wow. This is summing it up very nicely here. Fairly though, 1v4, but it's a 1v2 right now on this A site. If he can get in here and hit the first shot, anything is possible. Could still get up and look for a bomb plant. Surely the scope was heard though. JT's got the off angle. Cloud9 are, they're kind of trying to, they're doing like a, almost uh, an impression of Fnatic where you do whatever you want because you can. Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't make theoretical sense, like OC should never be there with no rifle support. He had no one in short B and no one around toilets or anywhere. He has no escape, but yeah, he will stand there and just kill them anyway. And that's what makes it even more difficult here for Copenhagen Flames is that now Cloud9 are just playing Chaos CS. There's no structure to it. If you're just going to have guys who are pushing all over the place, if you've got guys who are just set up in places that don't make sense, like you say, uh, how do you play against this if you're Copenhagen Flames? Psychological warfare. Indeed. You need to get the respect, but Cloud9 aren't going to give you the respect to play a normal game of CS until you force them to. It's a very difficult situation right now for Copenhagen Flames. And the aggression continues. Cloud9 confident with three players towards the B-bomb site, considering MOTM is ready to come in from the back. And here come the grenades. The flank will surely be fast for MOTM, creeping around the smoke for now. We've got some success on the B-bomb site, but very limited. Flo oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Floppy is here with the 4K. Hooksy right now is going, where did my bullets? What happened to my bullets? So they got one kill, at least. He was running up on point blank with the CZ, and he doesn't kill him. But yeah, that was an eco. And now we're going to get it. The buy coming in now from Copenhagen Flames. Fairly going with the AWP. And let's see what they're capable of now, Copenhagen Flames. You have everything you need for an execute. So again, we said they had to capitalize on that damage they did prior. They didn't. And the money starts to build once again for Cloud9. And Cloud9 with six rounds in a row. Again, they've got the smoke. It's so tidy, that smoke's just landing right behind that molly. Mm -hmm. With no collision until it pops. So they're starved. They're starved of oxygen. Look at their position towards A. They're in playground and they're just standing there. And look at their utility. All With that things. smoke up, you don't even have an angle to... Like, you would want to throw a pop flash for your teammates to swing from playground towards party. But you don't even know if anyone's found it. You don't really have any information. And again, the push is coming through. Finally, some success from Copenhagen Flames. They've been rewarded by over-aggression from Cloud9. There you go. That's how it's done, Copenhagen Flames. Sit back, hold the angles, and win the duels. Hit the shots when they push you. Very nicely done. JT wins that duel versus Hooksy, though.
Still a man advantage for Copenhagen Flames. Bomb making its way up onto the B site. Smoke is down, and so shouldn't be a chance here. Tessis on the flank as well. This is going to be it. He's going to walk into Modem, but Modem turns away. Modem still wins the duel. Get out of here, Modem. I feel like the Flames are nervous. Somehow this is a three on three. How have they not won the round yet? Modem's still alive. <laughs> Which means the round can still be won. The scope will certainly be heard. OC running distraction in that respect. MOTM just waiting. Copenhagen Flames, the time is running out. You don't have any grenades really to help yourselves. Well, that's another one to learn. Oh, that's Look so at the cool. time on the clock. There's 19 seconds. They don't have any control of the short position. They've just seen MOTM. Flashbang swings as he re -peaks. There's no cover to flashbang. This is just a complete domination. Eight seconds now. Is there even time to plant the bomb? Four seconds dead just about is. Unreal. Unreal that he gets that bomb plant. I'm gonna refresh 1v1 now. OC's been hitting all of his shots as well, and so this is gonna be a tough one for refresh. Needs to catch out OC. He's got the angle. There's the step, and OC of course hits the shot. One chance to do it, and he doesn't miss. And Cloud9 with an insane retake on the B site. And an insane defense. They didn't even really retake it. They just held the line the entire time. Modem is a hero though, dude. I, I cannot get over it. Modem and OC, this is their map. Yeah, but the fun the fundamentals we're seeing, like Tessa should have been there. We have to say he should have been there. He should have he should have been taken out, but I feel like that maybe there's some nerves coming in now at this point from Copenhagen Flames. But it's entirely possible. The fundamentals from Cloud9 are awesome. Like even with the high progressive play, they're still having their two man setups. They're still working together as a unit, which is their strongest facet is is the unit they have. And again those grenades once more. Someone's gonna do something about these. They're just at the mercy of Cloud9. Cloud9 are setting the pace of the entire game from the CT side. Finally, we see Copenhagen Flames. They make it to Fountain. Finally. And this time they hold on to a bit more of their utility. They haven't committed as much over towards that B side. So still three smokes for Copenhagen Flames to play with. And they've cleared out party as well as playground. So a little bit more of the map to play with, but you still have OC, who was hanging around on long this time, just in case. He's going to back off. Nodios through the smoke, catches Floppy. Just putting shots through. Feel good moment. Tessa's going to get flashed. JT is here. He has no idea. Uh-oh. Does he get spotted there? He doesn't. He did not. He did not. Un How did that happen? I thought Modem would have spotted Tessa. Five versus three. Cloud9 now gifting... Copenhagen Flames ways into winning rounds, but they still haven't been able to convert them. Surely this one they can do. Sonic's jiggling. OC's got a flash for him, but with his AWP out, he might not get the flash. Oh, he's got the flash ready, actually. Oh, the timing. No, they're going to creep in with no warning. The shadow. He has an idea, but again, that flash just won't come in time. OC now misses the first shot, and it's down to MOTM to try and ace this. They have a full buy in the hole, more or less. Bomb has been but um, you could always do is saving some money in almost every round on the CT side, so he won't try and do anything crazy. Well, there we go. This time, Copenhagen Flames are able to convert. They are under so much pressure. Oh, indeed they are. It is... Uh it is on Copenhagen Flames to save this half. It's still not slipped completely out of control. If they can start chaining rounds together here at the end, they can still turn this into a reasonable half if they get five or six rounds. They just have to play out. They have to frag out for the rest of this half right now, Copenhagen Flames. Looking at the score, I think normally if, if Copenhagen Flames won this round in like a more traditional fashion, the, the CT side might call a timeout just to break the momentum. Yeah. But it, it still doesn't feel like they have any momentum. It feels like Cloud9 are just being too aggressive. Um, which isn't a criticism, it's just an observation. They give up that round in part to that, mm -hmm. but it's it's led to, to all their success as well, which is why it's definitely not a, uh, a, a criticism at all. But again, Copenhagen Flames won the round, but still I feel like the momentum is is firmly in favor of Cloud9 here, so they'll just continue as normal. The Molotov out once again. We've got the four-man stack from Copenhagen Flames. And where is the fifth man going? Fifth man is Tessa. So we can see him on the radar heading towards Connector. No, nope, they spotted it that time. They spotted it that time because yeah. look at how quickly they're pushing up long now. Yep, Modem just hauls ass to the top towards Playground. They know that the boost was used. This is big. 
And the thing is, now that you run the risk of Copenhagen Flames, because they don't know if they've been spotted. They're watching. Refresh is watching behind just in case. But it's not sure. Right now they have to operate under the assumption that they could be getting flanked at any moment. And this is going to slow things down for Copenhagen Flames, funnily enough. Yeah, the problem with this is if you don't find success and you're spotted, you're very limited in where you can be. There can be off angles from around party for top connector. So you can only really be towards that B bomb site. Tessa's taken that Hooksy creeps into the B bomb site, but Floppy and Sonic will deliver. There's a swing. The boys a flashbang floppy, but he can't deliver the kill. Here comes the bomb now. Sonic is ready. The smoke is still up, and Farley is alone. MOTM coming in from the back. Farley surely doesn't make it. He doesn't. Ten rounds for Cloud9. Yeah. Really, I mean, just textbook stuff from Cloud9 with the reaction to how you approach it. You spot the boost, you instantly push up to, to playground. That's the first thing. You take over mid, you take away that part of the map from uh, Copenhagen Flames, and then you hold the angles. You know where they are, they're boxed in, and guys like OC just not going to miss that shot. They take it, they win it. So Cloud9, super solid stuff here on the CT side so far. Not only are they hitting the shots, but tactically they're doing great. And now even Floppy, you know, it was MOTM and OC at the beginning of this. Oh, the but double now even Wally. Floppy's just popping off. SS managing to hold the only space he has. Now, maybe this round, which feel like feels like the only round, they could actually have some presence towards the A bomb site with a focus on B. But Tessus is just so afraid of what, what else might be going on. Kind of reminds me of VP at their best as well. You just never know when that aggression's coming on the CT side. Cloud9 have bottled some of that for this game at the very least. Fear. It's a powerful thing. But JT's proactive as well. So even though they're a man down, they're not just going to wait for them to play their game. JT moving up long. In the meantime, the push seems to be coming towards B. Release the grenades. Forcing out the uh, utility from Cloud9. <clears throat> Curious if JT is going to get caught by this. Oh, no. Oh, they're going to rub backs. No way. Oh, six feet. Unbelievable. This timing. Unbelievable. Again, JT is going to get bopped. Just the way that that works. But Floppy's still alive. It's not <laughs> Takes two on the B site, but JT can't catch a break. That's twice now yeah. where the man gets lurked into restroom and takes him out. That's so unlucky. Probably wouldn't have changed the outcome of the round on that occasion, but it's just kind of brutal to watch. Floppy, 17 for seven. He has been delivering towards that B bomb site. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's like the, the, the quiet, right? It's all been modem and OC. And yeah. in the meantime, Floppy is like, am I nothing to you? <laughs> <laughs> just grinding out those kills, man. Oh. It's all, all the all the like choking towards the A bomb site has been so engaging to watch, but Cloudline are actually pretty light now in this particular round. They, they can't afford to lose this one. If Copenhagen Flames get four, they should get five here. Wow, being that ready for the boost though, not uh, not on. No, I mean, no use. Not caught sleeping. Is this where Cloud9 start to taper off towards the end of this first half? Now we see finally some proper rifle support, a classic setup here on Overpass. The barrel of the gun should be seen as well by Tessa. The Flash is here, they're ready for it, or are they? Smart em. They're just getting out jeweled, even when they're at advantage. Tessa is getting bodied in this game, in particular. With the last bullet, get out of here. Floppy's just popping off. Refresh can't trade this kill without giving some sound cues away, so he's just forced to walk. Is he going to have this angle for Floppy? He knows the steps finished short, and Refresh is pretty, he's normally pretty good for a fast frag, but... He's got the shadow. He's got the shadow indeed, yeah. Uh, he, gets the, he gets the advantage there. Fairly hits the shot. So we're all over the place again. Pure chaos here at the end of the first half. Yeah, that's the bomb spotted towards B as well. But I mean, but it's basically T-spawn, not even towards B, you could say. Now, 30 seconds. I feel like they're compelled to go towards the A bomb site here. But with a man disadvantage, it's going to be hard. And again, Cloudline are playing the angles where they'll see the shadows first. And it's Modem and OC. So uh, the two heavy hitters here. The Wombo combo. Molly onto the truck. They're going to go through. There's Flash, impeccable stuff. Modem, unbelievable. Still gets one. Gets traded, though. And now it's on Sonic to clutch it out. Fatty. 
He, there's the scope. And so Sonic hears that. He knows where he's coming from. Does Ferrick hit the shot? This is all on it. And he does. Perfectly done. Very well done. Very well done. Very nice. That was a scary one for Copenhagen Flames. But what round hasn't been scary for them? Again, they did win that fourth round. So they've broken the bye of Cloud9 at the very end. So as brutal as this has looked, maybe five rounds is enough. That's a big maybe, though. It is a big maybe, considering how they've been playing. Yeah. I mean, Cloud9 on Dust2 were just... What are you doing, my dude? I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Yeah. <laughs> go all the way back into T-Spawn to try and hunt this AWP. So we might see a faster round here from Copenhagen Flames. Although, I feel like, again, the pace of every other round has been set by Cloud9. But now they're on pistols. Well, maybe even now they won't have a choice. Pop flash towards short B. So they've cleared a lot of real estate. We have a lurker in Nodius. He would have heard that flashbang. But I do wonder if they'll swing around back towards that B bomb site. OC, pretty close to lighting up. How will they deal with the rest? Do they defend from the bomb site? I mean, there are a lot of mollies here for Copenhagen Flames. If they go towards A, I would imagine they should be in with a good shout of cleaning up the rest of Cloud9. But now they don't have any possession towards the inside of toilets. A four on four. I start to wonder. Look at this, the read from Floppy as well. Is he going to be close enough? Yes. This is getting out of hand. Oh, they're overcomplicating it. They're yep. against the it's pistols. It's overthinking it again, you know? Instead of just sticking to it, now... Surprise! Had no possession of inside toilets this entire time. There's 39 seconds left. What do you think the CTs have been doing in the meantime? Three players remain now, making their way towards B. They've given up an AK-47. Taken in isolation as the rotation comes in towards that B bomb site. Two plays in the water now as the T start to swing. Oh, Marley taken out. This round should have been free. But again, they've just capitulated. They've capitulated. Speaking of speaking of um, unforced errors, that was really, really brutal. And maybe tells the story of... Actually, I don't think it does because... No. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think it's, again, just a little bit of a, a miss. Just a little bit of a miss in terms of um, knowing when to just go for the jugular. You start overthinking things, you start overcomplicating things, and then you get this sick beat that gets dropped. It's Time to go to break. Guys. I need to listen to this. See you on the other side.
see IKEA are sponsoring uh, an esports team. IKEA? Yeah. Where the meatballs at? <laughs> All right, there are many jokes to be made here. Where the meatballs at? Yeah, exactly. The what if you what if you want a major? You're sponsored by IKEA. Is your star a meatball? That would be sick. I'm a genius. <laughs> Talk about engagement. Uh, the, you know, it's just uh, it's a very formulaic approach to uh, building a team for IKEA, I suppose. Oh, Copenhagen Flames here for the uh, the manual. All right, into it. Copenhagen Flames. Now you got to hit all the headshots. Let's do it. Yeah, Copenhagen Flames in the fours with the pinnacle odds. Uh, I feel like it's more than that. But maybe they are believers. Refresh gets a nice frag on MOTM, and that's information. That's the bottom dead. Bomb going towards the A bomb site. There's a CZ here for Nodius. He's got a smoke up, expecting a push, but that can be used for a potential defuse later on. Sonic trying to even the numbers out now. He's got a two man push coming his way, falling back, trying to play with his teammates. A jump and a, there's two frags pretty quickly for Copenhagen Flames. Now OC's got a lot to do here, a hell of a lot, and he won't do it. Blasted by the USP, smoke is up, the fuse is in. Copenhagen Flames win a much needed pistol round. Boom! Perfect start to the second half. So, Dust2, it was uh, dominant uh, pistols for the T side. Overpass, dominant pistols for the CT side. Yeah. So, that's just how it works, apparently. Uh, but uh, Cloud9 won the pistol in the last one. Copenhagen Flames won the pistol in this half, and that was just a lot of aggression. Uh, from Copenhagen Flames hitting all the shots. Unfortunate that Sonic couldn't find a kill when he first got the peek for info. I mean, he got the info, fine, fair enough, but if he could have just bopped one in the face there, that would have been pretty solid for the hold. Uh, it is going to be the force fight. It's going to be the Kriegs because they have the bomb plant. Yeah, the hero Kriegs. And this is this is part of the issue that I have with the Krieg is that th when they changed the price, they didn't change it enough. The value proposition for the Krieg is basically the same. Yes. Which is why it was kind of a useless update. Basically, it hasn't changed anything. Yeah, it's more expensive, but it's it's in w within the same range. So we still see the Kriegs in the, in the same positions where they were causing problems. We do. And right now we're kind of seeing it play out the way statistically it actually works with this Krieg buy. It always seems like it's so overpowered that you can get Kriegs in the second round. But I think it was like 65, 70% of the time you're still losing the round, even with the Krieg buy. But hey, you win that one round, it can make all the difference. Sonic. Two shots for Sonic. Two kills. Even the pop flash. But Farley's just gone inside long toilet, so he hasn't seen oh, it. Oh, unbelievable. But he's still alive. And he has a minute on the clock here. He knows where one of the two players is now. That smoke actually stops him from getting the bomb in the short term. It's so well played by Refresh, though. Look at that. Just shows himself, backs off. And now, look, Sonic is going to waste so much time worrying about getting pushed from these different angles. Yeah. Uh, now it's going to put him in a position where the only way he wins this round is if he gets both kills. So Copenhagen Flames is round to lose for sure. 28 seconds now. And at this point, I think you're going for elimination. Oops. Oh, he was close. Farley was one bullet away. 16 HP, but that's enough. They will take two rifles out. Just the one Krieg. We can both agree, though, that the Krieg is an abomination. I mean, it's, it's just the way. Yeah, it is too strong. It is too strong. <coughs> I, I'd be interested to see what it would be like if, if it hurt to buy. Like, when you buy an AWP, it hurts. And, uh, and AWP has a lot of, obviously, utility if you have one on your team. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think it should hurt if you buy the Krieg in its current iteration. Like, if they don't want to change it, make it hurt. Make it, make it, make it mad, like, not, not stupid expensive. I was saying make it $4,000 before people thought I was crazy, but I mean, why not? YOLO! Make it hurt. Oh, they get one tough break there for Tessus. Fairly getting some feel good frags, though. He's gonna nab three. And now it's on JT. He's got the howl. Let's hear it. Hey, <laughs> get out of here. Well played. I thought the Howl did plus two damage per bullet. So oh, that's it. You no, know, he's missed a trick there. <laughs> uh, it's a shame because they all had M4s anyway. So, But I like the attention to detail there. Mm. That is what you want to do. Just throw the guns away. So 11 to 7. Cloud9 still in the lead on the T side. This is the big buy round now for Cloud9. They have everything that they need. OC and Modem have kind of quieted down, though, towards the end of that first half. Going into the second, we've seen less action from them. They are a big reason why Cloud9 were able to get such a dominant scoreline in the first half. So look at the look at the difference here from Cloud9. They have the same Molotov coming in from both CT sides, but Cloud9 much more aggressive behind it, already with angles towards party. So they are better equipped to deal with this. Tessus boost is nice. I think it's it's strongest if you have like an AWP there mm -hmm. or or an org. 
But um, we'll see what it does. Maybe one frag will be enough. They've got two plays and connectors. So there's, there's a big investment here. There's a big investment. Now, if they pinch, if Cloud9 pinch connector through both sides, as it looks like they're doing, that's going to be a big problem for the CTs. It's just left in isolation now. And that's perfect. That's, a great, that's how you, t you clear connector from top and from bottom. The legs have been pulled off Copenhagen Flames here, trying to drag themselves over the finish line now. Doesn't look likely, though. That's Three players are tagged, but this is a safe situation for Copenhagen. That's a really way to, dark way to describe things, James. <laughs> imagine, imagine I played too that, much you know, Soldier of Fortune. The legs have been pulled off. You're just trying to crawl across. Wow. Before the entrails pop out, you know. Oh. Before it bleeds out, goes into shock, and it's just all, it's all ogre. Refreshing, nobody else. Last two alive, though. 2v5. And yes, Cloud9, that's that's a situation where, to be fair, uh, I think Cloud9, or Copenhagen Flames should have got more out of it, especially with the co with the uh, connector play. Could have at least taken Floppy, but Cloud9 win all the duels, and that's just how it's going to go. Yeah, with no supports around toilets for the players in connector, I wonder what the best case scenario is there for the two CTs. Like maybe you put a smoking connector and rotate out by a short B or something, but there we go. Again, where the coach at? There's a lot to be done here for Copenhagen Flames. Paid position. It's a good group of players. For both the male and female team for Copenhagen Flames, worth pointing out. They put that out there. I think uh, the female coach position is only half-time, though, whereas uh, they would want full-time for... Ah, I'm not familiar with... Uh, I'm not sure who's on the, on the female roster. Neither am I. At present. Five round lead for Cloud9. That's the first round of the second half, but it was a strong one. Again, Copenhagen Flames simply dismantled in that one. You can see they were going for some aggression towards party. Eight to flashbang. That shut that down. And Farley now with 50 HP is forced to fall back. Initial plan thwarted by Cloud9, who just have um, more bells and whistles in their game at the moment from what we've seen in this series. Taking over long as well. Playing to the advantage of the Kriegs. Let's get it. OC with the AWP, Krieg and AK, healthy mix of guns. And it's looking like this will wind up on the A side eventually as Modem is slowly clearing out restrooms in mid. And Sonic is taking care of connector. So the rotation is coming in, however. Hooksy's making his way up towards that A side. And now there's going to be three players on A ready and waiting for the side of Copenhagen Flames. Cloud9 are going to be hard pressed to make this work. The scope is heard. Farley falling back now. Tempest is here. He'll get traded though. Farley playing a dangerous game now. I thought he might get taken out. And there we go. Once again, Cloud9. They've got the stronger weapons down the T side and they continue to win the duels. Oh, it's crazy. Open and just it. the stagger of it as well. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say they're just getting out duels from map, from, uh, map to map, half to half. It's just the stagger as well where you're, you know, Copenhagen Flames, they're expecting it to be a push as a unit and. Just a little bit of a hesitation there from Cloud9, allowing him to feel out where these guys are set up. Oh, That's unreal. Survives with 2 HP. Get out of here. Could be the retake, but I think that seals it. They are going to back off. Yeah, Farley's got to run far to get away from that bomb. Far. <laughs> Dude, that's actually stressful. He makes the jump as well. I'm just waiting for him to try and jump off, and he just misjudges it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that, that fall damage. That hump through the waters mm -hmm. does catch people. Whew. Lucky stars have been counted, and he makes it out alive. Two HP, thirteen to seven. Cloud nine. It's a big round for them to win. He's got a good spawn. He could go for like a, a shot in connector here. That's it. Or towards party. It's pretty much the best forward spawn you could ask for. Let's see what they invest in. If they were to take an incendiary, that's a big a big investment though when they're keeping the money together. So again, it could have gone towards um, T-Rap, but it will be the connector peak and there will be entertainment here in the name of Floppy. But again, like you take that shot, if you don't have support upper, you've got to get out of there pretty quick. We mentioned that in the first half, we see it in the second. Nodius taken out early in the meantime, but the main play here now is AWP. The rifle is rescued by Hooksy and Farley will have to try and catch somebody off guard somewhere else now. Cross his fingers and hope. And this is going to be the full rotation towards the B side for Cloud9, and they are going to be set to just run right on through. Timing is now as well, but it's looking like they're just going to go through dry. No utility here for Copenhagen Flames. No lotion. There's the spot. Shot baited. 
And Modem picks it up. Modem with the AWP point blank. Is he gonna find the second one? Yes, he is. Hoaxy though, gonna spray him. No, JT's there to save. Speaking of Whoa, save. Oh. Bro, oh. <laughs> Speaking of save, it's time to hold on to these rifles. The opportunities have come and gone for Copenhagen Flames in this round. All they can do now is save in this two versus five as Cloud9 move to double the score of their opponent. 14 to seven is on the way. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder, this is a lower bracket match. Yeah. And so Cloud9, right now, they are fighting through and looking very good. I think this was a must win for Copenhagen Flames, but Cloud9 are imposing their will like dictators. Where are the rights? Where's the constitutional rights, Semla? Well, maybe there's a disease in the server, <laughs> you know? Maybe there's a pandemic in the server going around right now, you know? Copenhagen Flames. Given in to the fear. Uh, 14 to seven in Cloud9 now. Two rounds away from clinching this series and progressing in the bracket. And let's see, after the round, what do we got? Double AUG, okay. Don't see that too often these days. Krieg saved by refresh as well for Copenhagen Flames. Cloud9 back on the momentum game. MOTM almost reads like momentum, almost. If it didn't, you know, if you read the no match. But anyway, Warbang as CTs consider trying to take some position towards short B, and they do. You Sorry. don't see it every round, that Warbang, but sometimes it really just comes in and bites you. Shreds, especially with a Krieg. Rate of fire is bonkers on the Krieg. Yeah. Ah, everything about the Krieg. Let's not talk about it. 100% armor penetration. You might as well be naked. Copenhagen Flames starting to reposition. They've been quite passive towards A. You can see Tessus there just looking towards toilets. So they are devoid of information. That deep smoke on long will um, continue that trend. Well, maximum information gain now from JT. Gone ahead and cleared it, and he's just trying to draw attention, trying to draw that third man rotate up to the A site. And little does he know, that third man is already here. And so it is primed and ready to move out. The boost is going to tell him a lot. Two players there, could be a third in mid. And so now it's going to be Refresh peeking. Floppy caught looking the wrong way. Can't catch a break. And Refresh, big round from him. Flashbang to Laser Teeth pushing as well. Hooksy in the CT water, trying to buy some time as the smoke often will. He got some sound cues there. He heard a player jumping. He knows where at least one of the last two are. Sonic taken out quickly. OC now with the bomb. One versus four. The scope is hurt. He's got 20 seconds. Question of damage. He'll do a little. But Copenhagen Flames will survive with three. Holding on to one AWP. Seems like there was a decision to take a three that came too late there. That should have been an auto pickup if you ask me. Yeah. Especially if you're buying orgs. Tessa's in that situation. She's like, why me? Yeah. OC's oh, got to take someone with him, Tessa's. That's the answer. But we find ourselves again in the situation where uh, Cloud9, they had so much money. They're fine. They're going to be able to go for the full buy. Curious to see if we'll see a bit more of aggression out of them. Copenhagen Flames right now trying to show some courage. Trying to show some grit. I like it. Setting up. Birthday. There's the peak. Ooh. Oh, and OC's ready for him. He's ready. The more experienced man. They've seen it all before. Tessa took my favorite peak. Frag and forget, fall away. Very nice. Oh, that's it. Uh, it's still three smokes in play here for Copenhagen Flames, and Refresh is pushed all the way up to the monster. So a lot of information for Copenhagen Flames to play off of, and this is allowing for Nodios to rotate up to the A site. So they'll have Ooh. very stiff defense here on the A site, Copenhagen Flames. You can't see how close MOTM is. He's picked the right angle, MOTM. Oh, I think he may have seen his head. Not really sure. No, he has it. Yeah, top of the APC, stopping the information. A smoke to create some space, and this year the flashback goes, he forced the fallback, JT taken up, the floppy's on the site, harassing towards the back, two on two. Plenty of time to slow things down now, Cloud9. And we can't base before they secure a bomb plant, but MOTM walks to his doom, leaving floppy to try and clutch. Gotta be careful now, knows where one of the two is. Refresh is miles away, he's on a pilgrimage to make his way towards the A-bomb site. All the way through long, are you kidding me? He needs to get this bomb planted right now. And get the bomb. He needs because the bomb turns it into a two v two almost. So all right, bomb planted. Oh, he's exposed along, but he has no way of knowing. But he somehow sees it. Let's see. There it is. He's the shadow. Oh man. The jiggle peaks from refresh though. Yeah. 
That was, he was in the crosshair, he just didn't click fast enough. Tough. Nice attempts though, nice attempts, but a tough one there for Cloud9. Doesn't break their way. With the bomb plant, they're gonna have enough money for a full buy though, so it's still gonna be the fight. But OC, let's see it from his perspective. Yeah, saw that boost and just pulls the trigger. Nice, really so fast quick. as well, yeah. Really fast. Some poker at the end there from Floppy, just trying to disseminate the information. I think he read that the second player was likely coming in from long, and then when that shadow came, it was all but guaranteed. All but guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Copenhagen Flames on the comeback now. It's not too late for them to take this map. As, as, as unlikely as it has looks, they are catching up now on the cusp of 10 rounds. Cloud9 fast through connect. So we've got three players towards B for, Cloud, for Copenhagen Flames. Wonder if they'll go for a boost on the site. Quick jump peek from Hootsie. One or two. Looking for that information. Making plenty of noise, but nothing untoward is going on. And in the meantime, the rest of Cloud9 being thorough, gaining that map control. No early aggression from Copen Copenhagen Flames in this time around, and so Cloud9 can move on through. Fresh has had some success with these peaks, but eventually these dry peaks will uh, bite you in the bum. Man, it's just the standoff. Who's going to flinch first? How hungry are you for information, Copenhagen Flames? They've been playing with a lack of information for a long time. Oh, I felt that one. This has not been JT's game against Tessus. Tessus has got his number. Tessus has got his number this match. That is a very well-timed smoke grenade. Look at the time on the clock. They might have to, they might have to gamble through it. Such, such is the power of, of the smoke on that. Oh, they, they know, they know. Yeah, of course they know. They got nothing to lose by deploying these grenades at this, at this time on the clock. Oh, they put, you put both in the red. The Bob lost by Monster. No, Gip must deliver here. Go for the 180. Oh my God, he's made it winnable. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yep, the bomb needed to get planted right then and there. And it's not going to happen. Tess is once again the hero. Floppy, he either need to win out or die. Two seconds, and it's going to be on Fairleg. Can he back off and save it? It's looking like it. One AK and a couple of nades on Floppy. No bomb plant, though, and it's going to be the tactical timeout called by Cloud9. I appreciate this. JT finally saying, hey, we need to take a minute here, take a breather. We've had several opportunities to end this map now, and we've lost them. So time to slow it down. JT, though, I got to give it to JT. He's fighting, but Tessus, every time, Tessus is just winning that duel. Yeah. Wherever they run into each other, Tessus, Tessus has got him today. It looks like... Copenhagen Flames may have won enough rounds on their T side. The comeback is hard, but they're getting there. Mm. It's getting down to the, you know, the fine threads, but they're, they're still hanging on. They've got three rounds in a row now. Cloud9 have only won three from nine in this half. So the pressure's starting to rise. The Copenhagen Flames are winning in a very different fashion, but they're winning. Mm. All that matters is that you convert the rounds. Now we've got a hero AK-47 for Cloud9 in round 25. Floppy down to $50, the rest of the team keeping the money together. Looking to do damage, looking to maim. The line wants to maim and watch the prey limp away to be finished off later. We'll see if they can do that. Tess has gone deep on long. Toilets are wide open now. I have to keep an eye on the clock and see how Copenhagen Flames change their formation in that regard. Finally now already rotated towards the A-bomb site. But he's gone long as well. There are the smokes, and if they can get onto the A site and leave these guys to have to retake it, it's still not a terrible situation for Cloud9. A lot riding on Hooksy, but he gets flashed. And this means that they're going to move right on through here, Cloud9. Through this smoke, jumping in, no fear at all. Two, oh, three, no. and do they get the bomb plant? Yes, they do. Floppy now, 1v4. He had to hit it, but he doesn't. So, still get a bomb plant. That's, yeah. that's the whole point of that round is to just get that bomb plant down for Cloud9. Yeah, so if you're wondering what the Lemmings play was through the smoke there, it's just to take the attention away from the guy planting the bomb. All they want is the money. Uh, worst case scenario is plant the bomb, get the bonus money for the next round. That's worst case scenario. So running through the smoke, stopping that CT from... He's forced to kill them instead of the bomb planter. So objective confirmed there. Floppy's left to try and do damage after the fact with the AK-47. And because of that bomb plant, they are able to buy here. 
So I feel like those, those odds have almost got worse than at half time for Copenhagen Flames, even though they're three rounds away now. Pinnacle non believers, so there's value to be had there. The four Kriegs and the AWP out for the likes of Cloud9. Now, this is very possible where Tessus is for the flashbang swing. Does he get two? Look at the transfer through the wall, no less, and the bomb. They've come up trumps. So sick. And there's Fede again. Just one after the other. They fall on the side of Cloud9 and the aggression from Copenhagen Flames. They're the ones with the control now. Pretty sure Sonic just hit Hooksy jumping. Ah, he's not going to find the follow-up, though, is he? Yes, he is, but Nodios is there to trade it. Just too many bodies on that B site for him to handle. 14 to 12 after that round of Eco. They still have they have money to go for a force in this round if they want Cloud9, but they're not going to get any of the fun stuff. They're not going to get the ops. I mean, they could, but Modem would have to go dry. Yeah, half by force by. It's looking like it's going to be the force in the end. All right, get themselves an extra round. But Copenhagen Flames now, it seems like they're starting to hit their stride. Yeah. Some aggression paying off that's only going to build the confidence. And the guys who are dominating that first half, Modem and OC, have really dropped off in the second half. Not winning those crazy fights. Cloud9 needs to dig deep now. When your plan A is no longer working out, your plan B and plan C need to be on point. Dry peaks will be denied. A Krieg in the hands of the CTs will be devastating in Monster. Floppy with a P250, another lineup. And the Copenhagen Flames are surviving in the numbers now. That's a very strong situation for them. Sonic in a one versus four. He's got a minute 15 though, so he can do this. The problem is he's lost the bomb, which means that the uh, the CT setup is going to be super, super strong. And he will be walking into a crossfire, most likely. Is he hoping he can pick up the bomb in the smoke? Oh, there's no collision there. There's great only hit a tagging, and that will be that. Was waiting to try and catch him off guard, I think, through that smoke. Doesn't happen. Six rounds in a row now for Copenhagen Flames. This is where you can see the, uh, let's say, the break in the mental game for Cloud9, where they aren't a Tier 1 team. They're still, you know, Tier 1.5, Tier 2. As a Tier 1 team in this scenario versus a team that they just, you know, outright beat up in the first half should just be murdering them and taking the series, right? A bit yeah. more experience there. They they have that, uh, that ability to just go for the jugular. And here at Cloud9, it seems like they're right on the edge of match point. They've been right on the edge of match point forever, and they can't get the job done. The nerves are starting to creep in, Bartol. Yeah. Now, in this round, they're at max loss bonus. They can afford some pistols, some grenades, a fast play. And you never know, rounds like this have been won before. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't bought too much just yet. Floppy and Sonic, though, could definitely afford something. So we'll see what they end up with once this time to buy has come and gone. It's going to be super dry, actually. So they want all the bells and whistles in the in the round to come, which is nothing wrong with it at all. I like it. There's Farley giving them back what they were on the receiving end of in that first half. Numbers are seen towards the party position. Fadeaway flashback. The fadeaway HG, though, would have been quite nice, but he's got the AK to do it instead. Well, there's OC. Takes down Tessus. That was the only man who was really vulnerable for Copenhagen Flames, though. And now Cloud9, they have a bit of a tough job ahead of them. Floppy's got that AK, though, and he's been hitting shots. Quietly worked his way up to nearly a 30 bomb here for Cloud9. Slowing things down, they probably surmise they have a 3v2 on whichever site they go for. Not a huge fan of the fact that Hooksy's out here alone. Not a huge fan of this position at all, usually. Yeah, I think he's hoping for Farley to be the bait, but Farley's holding down two dogs here. And there we go. He's had to look at toilets and long as well, so that's a problem. And it, will, it might cost Copenhagen Flames. Surely he's got one more in him. Someone's got to swing. They've left a bomb behind, though. Focusing on the frags, and Farley will clean up. That could have been a lot worse. And indeed, that, that setup is cool if you have the sniper focusing on long, but the sniper can't focus on long because there are problems with toilets as well. A big risk taken from Copenhagen Flames. They'll manage to stabilize here. They've tied the score now. Yeah, we're going the distance. 30 rounds minimum at this point. And so we could actually get into that overtime scenario now. We'll see if Cloud9 are going to let it get to that point where, uh, you know, Copenhagen Flames take the 29th round and then Cloud9 finally remember. Just a quick note. I think C C Cloud9 didn't buy more in the last round, so they've got another buy in the next round if they don't win this round and don't start the box. Just a few bucks in the hole here. Now, look at this. How about that? A leaf from the Cloud9 book, a push through monster of two men. So early as well, you're never expecting that. 
risks being taken by Copenhagen Flames. So far, so good. A four versus three, still favorable for the CTs. Farley moving up back towards the A site from Long Beach. Look for though by JT. Must deliver that shot and doesn't. Cloud9 have let this slip completely. Oh, see, that was it. That was the kill right there. And now, well, they have the info. They know that there's two on the site for Copenhagen Flames. But now, I mean, this is all the time for the rotate through, and it's an impossible situation. Floppy has to come in here and just take this duel straight up. He wins it. Looking for the second one, but he gets overwhelmed. OC holding too far back. Can't watch his teammates back. And well, now he's about to get... Well, never mind. 40 seconds. Time to work with. He's got the bomb. Yeah, he's got so much time. That now, wherever he goes, he has a chance at a 1v1. Politely closes the door. Very nice. Well raised. Yep. Listen to his mum. There he is. Refresh is on the low ground. He's going to advance as the bomb gets planted. But you've got to be careful with OC. Farley has the angle already. The rotation so fast for the CT side. And we move to game point for Copenhagen Flames. Who saw this coming? Showing real fight. Showing real grit here, the Danes. Made it to the distance. What we're going to see now is the bomb. Well, they got the plant, so the money's decent for Cloud9. They can still go into a pretty powerful buy around here. But Copenhagen Flames, man, you got to admire it. After that first half, to take it all the way back here to force 30 rounds. This is impressive stuff from the Very, Danes. very, very, very. They're hitting their shots. Cloud9, I mean, there's a, the, you're starting to get that sense of desperation here from Cloud9. What's the call in the 30th round? What are they going for? Copenhagen Flames playing older than their years. In this respect. Molly for the short B tunnel. Cloud9 will smoke it. There's a boost on short B from the Flames. Yeah, this has been something we've seen quite a bit from them. They haven't really gotten too much use out of it, though, so they can keep going back to it. And in the meantime, Copenhagen Flames playing it by the book towards A as well with the early aggression, forcing them to take time. There's Fatty. Takes down JT. And refresh finds Sonic. That was the lurk as well towards the B site. And so, man, Copenhagen Flames, they have figured Cloud9 out. Oh, there's still a chance, though. Farley caught rotating. Now, there's an off angle from Long, which could be very crucial here. MOTM is looking for it, though. MOTM is on the bomb site, and that's going to be a problem. Down to a 2 on 2. Looking for that default plant. There's no cover, but there's no flank either. This is going to happen. This is actually going to happen. Cloud9 in the 30th round decide to fight back, finally. I mean, Modem decides to wake up in the 30th round after 10 rounds of sleep. Alone on the bomb site, MOTM has to deliver. OC's the worst case scenario. He spotted one of them. He's looking for the ace to take it to overtime, MOTM. And now he's the bait. Nodius has a kit, but he's got to find two players. They don't need to peek until he touches the bomb. Of course, MOTM with an ace to take it to overtime. Where was that round five rounds ago? Modem just knows that uh, because I've been down in water, I need to use the restroom. And he's like, you know what, Semler? We're going to take it to overtime. You <laughs> could have gone to use the restroom. But uh, no, it's not happening. So uh, here we have it. Tied up 15-15. And pretty much exactly how it almost always plays out. Yeah. Team that dominates. They can't clinch it. They can't get it done. And then right at the end. Back to the wall. Right at the end. They fight back. And it's 15-15. We're going into overtime. And now we have to see. Does it go back to Cloud9 taking control? It's usually how it plays out in these scenarios. Now, with four grenades, I wonder if we'll see more of a default when they go towards that A-bomb site. Free kill for Farley around the divider with no molly there. It's a fast play towards B on this occasion. JT trying to find his way through, eating a flashbang and falls back without taking too much damage. Hesitation there, though. It's going to cost him. Nodios looking for it. He gets wall banged down to 13 HP. It's a lot of utility used here by Cloud9. They need to capitalize on this, but the... The follow-up smokes. There are still three smokes, four smokes in play for Copenhagen Flames. Cloud9 have used everything, and they got cold feet and backed off. And now what do you do? You got to hope that you're going to catch Copenhagen Flames lurking, but four smokes on Copenhagen Flames. They can sit on the sites and just smoke you out of them all day. Floppy towards A, trying to find something. He's dancing with Farley, who has an AWP. Farley now, it's getting awkward for him. He kind of needs support here because time is ticking. I don't know if he knows that Floppy is inside the toilets. There's a flashbang, but he delivers the perfectly timed shot onto Sonic. 
Floppy now takes the off angle. Farley's going to move in, but he's going to go to the point in the return. Catches him off guard with a smoke up. Farley thought he was safe. Great timing from Floppy. They got a four on four. Now he's got to push from refresh to see if anyone's outside the B bomb site. He doesn't know about short B just yet, but Nodius has got to start rotating. Modern with the smoke. Tessus and Hooksy setting it up, but Modern is still in this fight. And is it the return of the beast? Is it Modern once again? There's JT helping him out. Two on two now. Bomb going to get planted. 20 seconds on the clock. Refresh is rotated up from connector. But nobody vulnerable just yet to him. In fact, JT backing all the way off. Never mind, Modem just walked right into refresh, but JT going to have to be the man here. Oh no, it's a truck plant. It's a safe plant. So is once it? they oh, it yeah, is. once they realize where he is, oh, he's making his way closer to the site, but he's got to start swinging. We can see one CT by default. He's running the scratch. Oh, he almost got there, almost. Awesome. But the trade probably would have happened anyway. I think they lost position in fairness. At that point, it's Copenhagen Flames past the first test. That's a key round for Copenhagen Flames. They're not going to get swept. And in these clutch situations, just a really tough situation there for JT. Not pulling it through. Cloud9, I mean, you got to give it to them. They still get the bomb plant. They still bring it to a 2v2, despite them completely fluffing their first uh, the first strategy, which was supposed to be just a straight out-and-out out B rush. And instead, we are looking at a close round. But Ferry, Ferry who has significantly woken up as well, after a very poor performance on Dust2 from him, he is he is just going to work here on Overpass. 27 kills to his name. Yeah, really nice work. Certainly warmed up now. JT with a flash towards Divider in case of the sniper there. The swing again. Ooh, is that through the smoke? Yeah, I think it was. Some. Yeah, finally creeping around. Now, Cloud9 needs to convert these rounds. Tessus is creeping long. Now, OC has a flash, which he's going to deploy for JT to swing. There's a flash, there's a swing. He's got to deliver this kill. He's got to deliver this kill. 1v1 with Tess S finally taken out. Now we've got big problems. Hooksy peeking and almost cost him all of his HP for that. He can be sprayed as well. He almost gets two. He's bought some time for rotation, but it's two versus four for Copenhagen Flames. Yes, group up Copenhagen Flames. Work together as a unit. Refresh, waiting to the last possible second, but now they know where he is. That oh, doesn't stop him from winning the fight. He's got a Krieg. Oh. Peeks into OC though, and now it's all on Nodios. Ooh. Nice spot. With 35 seconds on the clock, Cloud9 have got time enough to play with this. 1v3. Holding the angles, moving on through. Nodios putting the pressure on, but he will fall at the hands of Sonic. 16 16. He could have used that HE through. Uh, he could have bounced that off truck from down the stairs mm -hmm. for a default plant, which would have been more or less guaranteed damage. Because if they know where he is, they're almost definitely planting there. But there we go. 16 apiece. Last round of the first half of overtime. Who's going to take the thin lead? The Kriegs are out for Cloud9. AWP for OC. HE is dropped to pick up a second flashbang by Sonic. Those flashes have been important for Cloud9 towards that toilet area. Taking angles away from Farley. Not really bothering with the Molly Divider unless I've missed it. Sometimes the flash can be enough. Although sometimes it hasn't been and he's got a kill anyway. Clearing this out together. Little do they know. Oh, that's it. Hooksy's trapped. Has to hold his ground now. Help of the teammates. There's the flash, and it's just setting it up nicely. Tessus with an opportunity, though. Only going to get the one. 2v4, and the fight in mid swings Cloud9's way. Floppy has a tick where he presses Q all the time, which cost him his life there. It's lucky his teammate was able to trade. Otherwise, this round could be very, very different. Refresh is taken out, which leaves Novius in a one versus four. Yeah, if you watch, if you watch Floppy's uh, POV, he loves to, like a lot of players used to do this. It's like a tick, like a gun feels pressure. If you just press QQ, bring the knife out, bring the gun out. It's like you're, you're sharp, you're more alert. But um, the reality is sometimes you could do it in a, in a bad situation where it can cost you frags. We've seen that in the past as well. That was yeah. actually really common at the beginning of season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot Everybody was doing it, and it was costing them. You know who uh, always um, freaked me out, though, with the tick was um, nothing. He had this tick where he would rub his thumb on his mouse pad, and so he was constantly taking his hand off his mouse to rub his thumb on the mouse pad <laughs> and then put his hand back on the mouse. And I'm like, dude, like how many times? Like, you know, <laughs> Obviously, you're, you're, it's not punishing you often, but I was freaking out watching him play. Cause every time you're thinking he takes his hand off the mouse, that's what yeah, you yeah. think, right? You're going to think that. Mm. But... Um, I do that sometimes as well, just like re refresh like my grip of the mouse. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified something's gonna happen while I'm doing it, but uh, I don't think it ever has. Not once. Not once? Not yet, anyway. But now it's gonna happen immediately later exactly. on. Exactly. So. 
So there we go. Anyway, Cloud9 have a... They've got a round lead. They're back in the lead once more, but how long for? They move to the CT side, which was like, outstanding for them, and Copenhagen Flames will take a tack timeout, maybe just resetting the scene. Do Cloud9 go back to their hyper-aggressive game? It was such a long time ago now. It is. We've had and so many rounds since then. We also had... A, I mean, they were really aggressive, also because Modern and OC were hitting all their shots and winning all their duels. duels. Do Modern and OC have that confidence again going into it here? That's the question. Modern looked like he was warming up, obviously. He got that ace to take us into overtime. But uh, now, I mean, you need to see them just really start laying into it for the all-out aggression to work. Uh, Modern straight up to top mid. Right off the bat to begin with. So once again, Copenhagen Flames kind of contained towards the B bomb site. This time there's no lurker T ramp as there often has been from Cloud9. It has been meant a longer rotation. But here we go. They know what to expect. So Floppy has control of short B. Now they know this. So Copenhagen Flames can only be where they are right now. There's minimum surprise here for Cloud9. They've got four players towards the B bomb side here. The footsteps coming towards Monza, but it's still the opening kill for Copenhagen Flames. It's Sonic, he gets his head taken off. Tessa's moving on through. Finds one, there's the flank from Modem. 2v3, Modem and Osi. Bomb has not been planted yet. They still have room to maneuver with, and they're gonna push through the smoke, and Hooksy's ready for oh it. Oh my god. Follow up, oh, too many targets! But they know, right on through, this is unreal! They worked their way through CT. What a nightmare scenario now for Modem. He was a second too late on the peak. They have no right to have made it this far into this round. Oh, and he got spotted. Man, he just cannot. Now it's really hard mode. 1v2 clutch. He's got a sound cue, so he hears exactly where that player has gone. The question is, where is the other one? Nodius is still on the low ground, it seems. And maybe that was part of the play here to bait and switch. Refresh towards long. Man, this is taking a long time. He knows it's being distracted. That was the last thing he expected was the flank after those sound cues. As we saw the baits and switches from Cloud9 in this whole series, there's a big one from Copenhagen Flames to win the round. Mm -hmm. That's a huge play from them. Oh, it's, uh, that's a key round, such an important round. We're looking for the first team to reach 19 rounds here in this first half of overtime. And that's, I mean, Copenhagen Flames giving themselves a fighting chance. The fact they even got entries on the B bomb site and to begin with, considering Cloud9 had four players there, and that was the only place Copenhagen Flames could be in the first place. To walk through the smoke like that with the bomb, if there's three of you, at least one of you just go for the wide swing or something. Like, oh. Absolute madness. There's the setup, one, two combination. Flash from Autumn from OC, and he starts it off strong. You also got a feel for OC in that round where they peek him and he's, his crosshair is between two targets and it's yeah. that nightmare like, ah, oh, no, too many targets. Can't pull the trigger. How they got through those smokes to CT, I will never know. That was bananas, but here we are. Five versus four for Cloud9. Oh, that's the worst case scenario, exactly. There's no collision. Ah. Oh, he sees him, but all too late. Farley delivers two entries with the AWP through Monster. Sloppy's gone now. But Sonic is still here. He's been quiet so far this match. Needs to start hitting some shots. This is so tough now. Man advantage for Copenhagen Flames going into the B take. They're all grouped up. They're ready. Two ops to hold the line. And Modem is still worried about the A site. Only now rotating down. I mean, one for one. That's as good as it's going to get for Sonic in that scenario. That's the bomb trying to trade. Makes his way back to the site, Nodius. MOTM now goes down to the water. Bomb has been planted. He's got angles. He's got a chance. He's got the M4A4 as well, so we could get two. But who's going to peek first? It seems that no one's on the site. Oh, he somehow eats a flashbang. Looks all the, all the wrong ways for that. I don't know how he got flashed by that, to be honest with you. Neither do I. Now he's in an impossible position. Cloud9 seems to have run out of steam here on overpass. The way these rounds have gone. It's the real fight. And now Copenhagen Flames, this is it. Golden opportunity. One round. Or are we going to get another magical modern ace? Take us to the second half of overtime, second round of overtime. Ferling up close, just Ferling is really woken up here for Copenhagen Flames. Second half, he started to really start to hit some shots, and here in overtime, he continues to do the same with that AWP. Solid work on his part. And well, we're gonna go for it. We haven't seen this boost for a little bit, so let's see. Does it get any value or not? Oh, do they that, see the spot? That smoke he just yep. threw was they to spotted it. That smoke he just threw was to extinguish the molly. I've never seen someone throw that before. That's really cool. There was the spot, though. They know what was the play there. They know the boost was happening, and they're going to peek in and find the kill on Tessus. 
Cloud9 setting themselves up once again. But this cost them last time. They had a man advantage in the last round, and they still managed to lose it. So let's see. Cloud9, can you redeem yourselves? So that T-smoke we saw earlier could suggest that uh, someone is towards the A-bomb site. The problem is, for Copenhagen and Flames, they've n I don't feel like they've almost ever had uh, successfully had progress towards A following that. But look, they are very aware of their problems, and Farley will punish MOTM. Now, what does OC do? He's holding the rotation through Connector, more or less. That's his job. So there's a four on three if Copenhagen Flames make their way towards B. They still have almost max utility on these four players. That one kill, man, look at how far OC is. Having to worry about that A site. Bottom dying. The chain flashbangs are absolutely glorious. JTE's the second one. They're lining up for Floppy. But again, it's just down to OC. He can get a quick rotation, though, into that B bomb site. Sean Gares would be raging right now if if he was the in-game leader of Cloud9. This modem dying just allows Copenhagen Flames to walk right on through here. It spreads the defense out on Cloud9 because they have to worry about OC. He has to be over on the A site in case Copenhagen Flames rotate through the hole in the defense that modem created, essentially. And now we're in a 1v2 post-plant scenario, and it's looking like a third map unless Copenhagen Flames screw this up massively. Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I think he could have got it as well, but he's got time. He's going to do it anyway. OC delivers the package, UPS style. Next day delivery, overtime number two. We're not done just yet. What? <laughs> it's not over yet. There's more Counter-Strike to be played. My brain right now. Huh? Now, on the, the pro for, for Cloud9 here is that they continue on the CT side. They need to kind of find that magic they had in, in normal time, though. They're getting, they're like, I think in every, every round there, Copenhagen Flames are all towards B. But they're still winning the rounds, despite that Cloud9 have all that info and they know they're coming. They're getting oh unlucky God. with, like, the smokes toward Monster not colliding with the player to tell them that they're there and so on. But I feel like they should have won more of those rounds. Certainly. Cloud9, I mean, they've had multiple rounds in that overtime where they had the man advantage and still did not succeed. Ooh. Tessus has to be careful though. Yep. Presence of mind to slow down and wait for the flash from his teammate. And now oh. he's holding it. OC and Modem working together. I like that from Tessus though. Still just waited for a second to get that flash in there. No use to creeping through Monster in the meantime to try and make something happen. Can he pull the CTs out of position? Sonic is comfortable, it seems, on the B bomb site. He's got JT on the way as well. I don't know if there were some sound cues. Farley's picking up the bomb now. Farley, excuse me, making his way the safer way via T spawn towards B. So once again, it's going to be a B play. Now, MOTM is going to be the man to go into connector to see if what's going on there. And OC will probably rotate towards B as well. He's wondering about long. Oh, he's got the angle. He's seen one. Refresh gets swatted, and there's no response. Not impossible. No deals, though. Could work his way out through Monster. Saw JT's gun barrel. He knows that somebody's toxic. Sonic going to win his duel, though. And so now it's fairly alone. 1v4. Looking for the big. Just do it with the off. There. Flanked by Modem. And so 19-18. Cloud9 taking the lead. We are now looking for the first team to reach 22 rounds. To win this map. And Cloud9 again in the lead by 1-0 on the maps. Best of three format here. So if Cloud9 win this map, that's it. That's the series. And in the meantime, Copenhagen Flames, well, let's see if they change it up. We haven't seen them go long in quite some time. It has been a real B focus from them. Oh, so that's the smoke for the ramp. There we go. We're seeing all the utility now, all the, all the funky stuff, which has told a lot of the story in this game, in the early rounds at the very least. Copenhagen Flames in a late game now, having more success going beyond all that junk thrown by the uh, CTs towards the ramp, but... Oh, the timing! Dry peaks, it's not even a flashback. Yeah, you hate to see it, especially if you've been holding that angle for a while. Unscope, and then he peaks. Yeah, Farley's been taken out, creeping towards Monster, and Nodius loses an exchange through the smoke as well, so things are going from bad to worse for Copenhagen Flames. Oh, oh my god, what kind of bounce was that? That's in his mouth. Oh, he just took a bite of the magic apple. That's painful. And well, Cloud9 now, what are you going to do? 
19 to 18. Two man advantage in the round. Copenhagen Flames faltering a little bit and floppy thinking. Outrageous. He's I love thinking. it. Chance for him to push through and he's going to do it and he could just completely eviscerate this push. They're waiting though. They're waiting for Tessus to make a play towards Zayn while they wait. Refreshes aware of. Oh, that was so fast. Straight in the dome, man. Closed casket funeral. But where's the support for the bomb? Sonic's able to just about pull out his rifle. Again, we've got nerves here. Tessus will go down for free. And Cloud9 have got two for two at present. Wow, Bottom doesn't even pick up the AK. Wow. Oh no, he got it. Okay, never mind. 20 to 18. Back to normal time now, it feels like, where Copenhagen Flames just didn't really have an answer to anything. When, when Farleg is the first one to go down, they're going to be in trouble because, again, he is having a lights out performance now. He is the one doing the majority of the fragging, it seems. I mean, Tessus has had his moments, of course. You can always count on him. But Farleg coming alive here towards the end of the second half in overtime. It's really helped Copenhagen Flames, but about nine. And here we go. Tessus straight through into Sewers. Not worried about getting his boots wet. Yeah, it's really nervous for the T's though when the door's been blown off. So the CTs have control of Connector, that can cost you. Although OC will get taken out through Connector by the likes of Hooksy and Tessus. And there's a threat taken out for a while. Plenty of sound cues to be heard by the CT by Graffiti. And they're going to charge in a simple split of the bomb site, charging through. Four players making their way in. And there's no time to really call anything here. They're just charging through. Floppy's got to keep some bullets in the hole. He's only got eight trying to dance around the smoke grenade, but he's taken out by Refresh. MOTM now with it all to do. One versus four. To try and keep a clean sheet. Won't happen. We've got one round in the bag there for Copenhagen Flames as the sides will change. Deciding to get a bit more aggressive there. Did not hesitate, and that ends up netting them that round. Solid, solid work there from uh, Copenhagen Flames. You kind of wish you could have seen that a little bit earlier. But it is off of them learning, and Tessa's getting aggressive in sewers early. They catch OC. Yeah. And so, bit of a punish on the aggression finally there for Copenhagen Flames. They managed to actually play it out. But Cloud9 now, they get to swap over to T side. And well, very curious to see what they're capable of here because it does feel like for a while there it was feeling good. And then they were at a loss completely. Well, I am at a loss right now. It's like tough to predict what you're going to do here because now we're in the second round of overtime. These teams are going to be changing everything up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's winnable by any of them at this point. It's really impossible at this at this juncture to have a good idea of who is going to take it. Cloud9 had so many advantages, but a little Chocorino. There's the flash. Getting out. Fede playing very well from the A site. Passive. They've got to do more, though. They've got to, they've got to force him all the way back. Oh, is that the lurch mode? Nice. This takes some angles away from the AWP. It's close enough that he can't look over either. He'd be blind if he went into it. So we're seeing some adjustment from Cloud9. They're, not, they're trying to not make the same mistakes. Now, that scope has surely been heard. Now, M OC could flash forward him. Oh, the dry peak at just the right time. I think he did. Now, OC can deliver a flashbang. Oh, Tessus with the headshot. JT, though, brings it back four on four. Pressure mounting on the defense. Second man is rotated up to that A side as well. That's Hooksy now backing up fairly. What is the call here? Do they really want to go for a... Oh, no. He's Oops. missed the flash out the window. Now, this is a scary... Like, they're trying to show some presence. So the A side's not stacked. But to go through Connector would be suicide. You, they just can't do it. Well, that's your only smoke down there in Connector as well. modem has got to get up here if he wants to help out. Big shot, and there it is. Floppy wins the duel. hooksy has gone. No, he goes with a quick flank through Connector, though. Going to phase two. He goes down to Floppy as well. Ferry and Refresh, the last two alive for Copenhagen Flames. Trying to push through with a retake. For refresh catches one looking the wrong way. Big opportunity now. Ooh. And there it is. Dude, this is Floppy's round. Unbelievable. Three kills for him, and it's JT coming through in the end. Match point for Cloud9. Two of them. Nice turnaround there from Cloud9. They had a lot of problems with the AWP towards that A bomb site. Again, they, there were a lot of dry peaks in uh, the prior rounds when Farley was around Divider and so on. So they're trying to avoid giving, giving him those picks, forcing him back so he doesn't have the info. There are a few different ways to put a smoke up by that flower bed. So even if you're on default, for example, you can't see people creeping towards the site. Surprised we don't see that more on overpass, but um, they're adjusting here, Cloud9. They're trying to solve the problems. Tessus eats a flashbang, but it's an aggressive round from Copenhagen Flames towards A. Sonic lurking towards B as usual, but quickly falling away. 
Now these steps up long will be hurt by oh, MOTM. He's almost invincible. Unreal. There it is. Floppy finally gets taken out though. That's 39 frags on the board for Floppy. Spot Sonic there to trade it. Man advantage maintained. Never mind. Freddy brings it back to a three on three. Yeah. The aggression. Although, look at this. JT is pushed all the way up to long. Can he catch them before they can get onto this A side? It seems like they realize it as well. Copenhagen Flames. JT about to walk into his death unless Freddy decides oh. to fight to him. And now JT has a strong position. Now, I'm not sure if JT was hurt earlier. Farley was holding the angle previously, and there's JT. Surely this is the end now. Moves forward as Refresh takes him out by the bank. The bombs is back, and he applies the attack, but no frag. One on one, and there's OC to finally finish it off. Cloud9 will take it 2 0 by the skin of their teeth. Absolutely crazy series. The comeback was real, but it was taken away once again. What is this game? What are these rounds? You're holding your breath the entire time. It could go anyway, and Cloud9 somehow managed to navigate through the chaos through the storm. That was absolute carnage, a war of attrition. They almost lost it, but they managed to bring it back. A big 2-0 for Cloud9, and that's an opportunity lost for Copenhagen Flames back to the drawing board for them. That's the game done. That's us done, too. It is indeed. We're going to see the thoughts of the couch, the people on the couch, not the couch itself, after the break.